Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for a beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for being the awesome creator that... um, that your creation testifies of your goodness. But Lord, as we open up your word this morning, we pray that your word would come alive. Lord, we pray that there'd be a moving of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to touch each one here, each one listening, Lord, that our lives would be changed as we learn more about who you are and how much you love us. We ask this now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, guys, if you'd grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we're going to continue our study of this beautiful letter that Paul wrote to the church. At Corinth. Let me show you today. Paul is going to, he's now going to point, go from pointing out the immorality that would crept into the Corinthian church to now he's going to address a different issue. Do you know that these guys are actually, some of you read ahead, okay, so I'll, I'll just tell you if you didn't. Chapter 6, that he's actually got to address that they are suing each other in the church. They have lawsuits against one another. And not, they're not like bringing the the issue before the church, like, hey, help us out, this brother wronged this other brother, you know, you guys give us your judgment, what you think we should do. No, they're taking it to the attorneys out in the, in the world, and they're asking them for their opinion. They're paying. I, 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 listen to what Paul has to say about this. It's kind of ironic to me, because he's like, you guys already lost. You know, when you start, when you start farming out your your case to the to the attorneys. Who wins anyway? You guys all know this, right? The attorneys. I mean, he was, this is stupid. You guys are suing one. They, now, can you imagine? Do you think this would ever happen that in a church? People would sue each other. Do you know? I get letters that say, if you use our worship song in your praise time, we will sue you. Yeah. And there's a whole group that has collected the royalty rights of a bunch of different worship songs and said, if you use these songs without giving us a, 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 a royalty check, then we will come and we will shut your church down. That's a really godly thing, don't you think? If you ever wonder why I use old hymns that are beyond um, what was called the, the, the there's a time period where they're, you know, they can't do that. And then you might notice there's a few few modern hymns that are not in your normal hymn book. I learned a long time ago, they can't sue me for songs that the Lord gave me. And I've been doing music. You know, when you grow up with a dad who plays first chair accordions for Lawrence Welk, you, you get to be around good musicians. So if you wonder why I can play all styles of music, I had a really good music influence in my life, my father. And because of that, you know, when I first got saved, I just thought, well, you know, this Christian music sucks. So I'm going to have to do something about it. You can't, okay, listen, you're not allowed to criticize if you're not going to do something about it, okay? That's just not your place. But if you recognize there's a problem and God gives you eyes to see a problem, why does he usually give you eyes to see a problem anyway? Because he wants you to fix it. Not you to go tell the pastor to fix it. A lot of you guys got this wrong. You come tell me. That's not why he gave you the eyes to see it. He gave you the eyes because he wants you to get involved in fixing the problem. But in this case, I was one of the ones that had the eyes to see it and the gift to fix it. And so he let me write a lot of worship songs that have been used over the years. And they'll say, author unknown. And I laugh because I know who wrote it. But if they ever try to sue me for using my song... I'm going to say, you know, I, my dad taught me what to do. You mail yourself the original copy, and you don't open it. You leave it sealed in an envelope. It's the old school way of, because it's stamped and dated by the post office. And you write in, written by, this date, the whole thing. And I did that with a few of my songs, just so that these crumbs that go around, and actually, they should not be suing other Christians First of all, for worship. I mean, come on. If you wrote a worship song, wouldn't you just be blessed if you went into a different church and heard them singing your song? 
I mean, I know when I go in and I hear him singing a song that the Lord gave me 30 plus years ago, it just brings a smile to my face. I just think, Lord, you are so cool. I mean, just it's just like the Lord winking at me, you know, like, wow, it, it circulated, you know, it, it made its way around the, around the horn. It kind of went over to here and to that group and to that group. And it's really a blessing. But to think they would actually sue over a worship song. Well, look at the Corinthian church. Listen to what Paul. Now, you guys, I'm only going to do half this chapter because I'll go over the suing part today. You know, it's enough to crack you up as it is. Let me read it to you. Chapter 6, verse 1 says, Does any one of you, it says, when he has a case against his neighbor, dare to go to the law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? He says, or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? If the world is judged by you, he says, are you not competent to constitute the smallest of law courts? Do you not know that when, that, that we, he says, will judge angels? And how much more matters of this life? He says, so if you have law courts dealing with matters of this life, do you appoint them as judges who have no account in the church? He says, I say this to your shame that it is so that there is not amongst you one wise man who is able to judge or decide between his brethren. Don't you got anybody there with some wisdom upstairs? Now, okay, look, did Paul pastor this church for a year and a half? Yeah. Does he know that they got guys there that could handle this? Sure. But this kind of teaching when you're a teacher is what we call reminding. <laughs> it's more like pointing out the obvious, but it has to be done. Don't you guys got anybody that could like decide, that's got a little wisdom, that they don't have to be spending the money on lawyers and going to the world court over this silly stuff, one brother suing another brother? Can't you guys do what's right? Can't you get somebody there with wisdom? And, and verse 6, he says, But brother goes to the law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Actually then, Paul says, listen to verse 7. You might want to highlight this. He says, it is already a defeat for you that you have lawsuits with one another. He says, why not rather be wronged? Or why not be defrauded? You know, just let it go. It's not a win because you took your brother to court and you, and, and, and you beat him. Paul says, you know, it would just be better just to be... Now, do people in churches like to hear this kind of stuff? To suffer the wrong when they're wrong? Did the Lord Jesus ever suffer any wrongs against him? Yeah. Just a few, right? They, they, oh, no, they treat him perfect, right? Never pounded that crown of thorn in his head for no reason. or Beat him with the stripes and flogged him. And you, did, What did he do wrong? Nothing. Nothing. You know, and the Lord Jesus is our example. We, we don't suffer wrong very well in our society. We're like, we'll get them back. Ooh, they did me wrong, I'm going to sue them. Paul says, if you do that, it's already a defeat. It's no wind. And you know, no wonder that non-Christians don't want to sign up for the Christian club. They're like, why should I? Those guys are just as bad. They sue each other. I mean, if they would see us behave in a Christ-like manner, a higher I call it taking the higher road. We would walk the higher road. They'd be going, you know, I'd rather be in their club. They don't sue one another over petty stuff. They work it out. They go to find someone with wisdom and ask them, hey, what do you, what's the right thing to do? And they actually do it. What a, what a sweet thing that would be if we were known for always being the ones that took the higher road. But on the contrary, Paul says, verse 8, he says, you guys, you, you, you yourselves wrong and defraud, and you do this even to your brethren. How would you like to have this written about your church in the Bible? That your church goes down in history as the ones that had the wrongers, that wronged and defrauded each other in the church. No, we, we, we don't want to admit that churches have problems. But guys, in the Holy Bible, here's a church that's got problems. He's got real problems. They're, they are wronging each other and defrauding each other. They are suing each other in the world court and they're not even taking it to the, to the saints. Who Paul says, this is interesting to me because 
I didn't know this. Did you guys know it says here, don't you guys know that you will even judge angels? I never knew that until I read the Bible. That, that the church is going to judge. What? We get to judge angels? What angels am I going to judge? My poor guardian angel is going to have a flat spot right here from going, ay, 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 it's his, he's <laughs> always doing that stuff. But I don't think I'll judge him. Now, I do know, remember when Lucifer rebelled against the Lord and said, I'm going to beat you at your own game. I wanna, I'm going to be God. How many of the angels of heaven rebelled with Lucifer? A third. And you know what's interesting to me here in Hawaii, in Hawaiian culture, there's a great sensitivity to the fact that these dark figures, these, these dark presences, these, these silent night walkers or, or, or shadows, they're like, there's these dark spirits that walk our land. And when they say these things, I think, they go, I don't know if you really believe in that. I said, well, um... Before I was a Christian, I hung out with these guys who were called Satanists. They all had their own little extra power source. And they called them their friends. I say that real loosely. That lived inside them. And they were demons. But a demon is what? Technically, a fallen angel. It's one of the third that fell from heaven. And where did they go to when they fell? They were cast out to where? The earth. Yeah, they're down here walking around. Now, where are they headed in the eternal scope? We already know where they're going. Even further, <laughs> to H-E double toothpicks. That's what we would say in Catholic school. We weren't supposed to say hell. Okay, the nuns did not like it. But we could say H-E double toothpicks, and that was allowed. But just to let you know that the demons do know where they're going to go. You remember when Jesus showed up? And there was a man that had a legion, a thousand demons. And he was, he was in the graves. He was get, cutting himself and harming himself and not in his right mind. And Jesus came and he comes to that side of the Gadarenes on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. There's a steep cliff and, and, he, and he sees the man and the, the demons cry out, What do we have to do with you? The demons are talking to Jesus. Oh, son of the Most High. They knew who they... They knew who was standing in front of them. Have you come to cast us? Now, who knows the rest of this line? To cast us where? Into the pit before our time. Do they know that there's an appointed time coming that they're going to be cast into the pit? Oh, yeah. The one thing they were worried about when Jesus, the Son of Man, showed up, the Son of God, they went, <gasps> Uh-oh. Are you going to... Are you good? Are we getting chucked into the pit now? And they entreated Jesus. Can we instead go into those pigs, right? Can we go into those pigs? Jesus said, all right, go ahead. Now, some people think this is a bad story because the pigs, you know, they don't make it. I hate to break your heart, but especially if you're a bacon lover. But... They go, the demons go in the pigs, the pigs rush off the steep cliff, and what happens? They drown in the sea. Don't worry. Okay, just so you know, the, the land of the Gadarenes right there, that part, that was supposed to be settled by one of the tribes of Israel. I got a question. Are Jews allowed to eat pork? What were they doing raising pigs? They weren't supposed to be. You know, back then, you didn't cook the pork, what did you get? We call it trichinosis. I don't know that they knew the name, but you got really sick. And they weren't even supposed to be eating that. They weren't supposed to be raising them. Jesus just basically cleaned out a problem that they were doing big no-no by letting the demons go into the... And then the man was sitting there in his right mind. Whole. Jesus had freed him. From these demons. Now, before I became a Christian, I hung out with guys that had their own little friends. They call them friends. Demons that lived inside of them. My own daughter said, Dad, sometimes I feel like there's like dark creatures that come around my window. Try to bug me on Saturday night. I said, well, they are there. I mean, but just to comfort you, um, there's a ratio between the good, the good angels and the fallen angels. 
And by the way, you want to be on the good side for this one. You know why? Because when only one third fell, that left two thirds in heaven. Now, if you're not good at math, that means for every one bad angel, one fallen angel, or one demon, how many good ones are there? Two. two. That's right. The odds are in our favor. But this verse really sticks out to me because, you know, coming from hanging out with possessed guys that had fallen angels in them, they let them voluntarily come in their bodies and inhabit them. And those, those fallen angels deceived, did all sorts of trickery and deceit, promised them great powers. And by the way, they never did anything good for them. I'm just telling you, from hindsight, they never did anything good for those folks that they inhabited. They tormented them. But I never noticed this. It says right here, Paul. Now, Paul is pretty learned in the Scripture, way more than I am. He was called a Pharisee of Pharisees. Studied under Gamaliel, the, one of the top rabbis of the day. He was so learned in the Word. And he says, do you guys not know? Can you imagine hearing this from the guy who's founding pastor of your church back on his missionary journey a couple years ago? He's writing to you and he's just reminding you, don't you guys know that someday you will judge angels? Is he talking about the good angels? Or do you think the fallen ones? I'm pretty sure it's the fallen ones. Don't you know that you... And I, I was thinking, really? We get to judge them. Man, I got some of them that caused me a lot of trouble. Any of you ever felt like there's demons giving you a little hassle? You ever thought how good it would be that you get to judge them someday? Like you, Crumb. You little creepy shadow that gave me bad night's dreams and mess with my sleep and mess with my family. You know, someday we get to judge them. I never even noticed that verse. I read right past, how many of you read past this verse before? You never noticed it's in there? Do you see that there? I'm, I'm not making this up. For those that maybe they're driving, listening to this later, be careful. Don't, don't, you don't have to look right now, but when you get home, just know, Paul, Paul is telling them, you guys, verse, he, he says, Verse 3, do you not know? This First 1 Corinthians 6, verse 3, do you not know that we will judge angels? I didn't know that. Did you, did, how many knew this already? Some of you are like, oh, I, uh, <laughs> Pastor, you're slow, man. You didn't, <laughs> I've known that for a long time. But I didn't know that. It's right in the book. But I did catch on to the part we're not supposed to sue one another. How many of you knew that already? Right? I mean, should Christians be suing other Christians in the church? No. It's a disgrace. Rather, Paul said, just be defrauded. It'd be better. Take the high road. Don't go for that. You're just going to get drugged down. And, you know, does anyone really win when they do this whole suing thing? Just the lawyer. You got it. Just the attorney. Not the, not the people involved. It just tears them down to nothing. It's so sick what these lawsuits can do to people. I tell you, we would be better to just be defrauded and move on. The pain is less if you can, if you can receive it than when you get that bill from the lawyers. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.